Chosen one, be careful. There are people out there trying to harm you. But don't worry too much. Believe it or not, anyone who tries to harm you will face consequences. The chosen ones are often people who carry a strong positive energy. They aim to spread light and goodness wherever they go. Unfortunately, not everyone appreciates this. Some people may feel threatened or annoyed by the positivity of the chosen ones. This negativity can stem from various reasons such as jealousy or insecurity. When individuals see someone who is genuinely happy and spreading positivity, it can remind them of their own shortcomings or unhappiness. This can lead to resentment and, in some cases, attempts to harm the chosen ones. Those who try to harm the chosen ones might do so in various ways, including emotional, psychological, or even physical harm. The underlying motives for such actions are often rooted in negative emotions like envy, jealousy, or a desire to feel more powerful by bringing someone else down. This destructive behavior stems from a place of inner turmoil and insecurity, where the individual believes that by causing harm, they can elevate their own sense of worth or alleviate their own suffering. However, the universe has a way of balancing things out through a natural order that seeks to maintain fairness and justice. This cosmic balance operates on the principle that every action has a reaction, and those who send out negative energy will eventually experience the repercussions of their actions. When someone tries to hurt a chosen one, their harmful deeds often set in motion a chain of events that leads to lessons from the universe. These lessons are not always immediate, but unfold over time, reflecting the nature of their negativity. The person who causes harm may find themselves facing personal struggles, losses, or challenges that mirror their own actions. These obstacles serve as a means for the universe to teach them about the consequences of their behavior, encouraging growth, self-reflection, and ultimately, a transformation towards more positive and compassionate conduct. Through these experiences, individuals are often forced to confront the impact of their actions and understand the importance of treating others with kindness and respect. The purpose of these lessons is not merely to punish, but to foster growth and understanding of the impact one's actions have on others. On the spiritual path, negativity can come from unexpected sources, which may include people close to you, unforeseen situations, or even internal struggles. Recognizing these sources of negativity is crucial for maintaining your spiritual well-being. It's important to be aware that not everyone will understand or support your spiritual journey. Some individuals might project their own fears and insecurities onto you, attempting to pull you back from your path in an effort to cope with their own discomfort. These projections can manifest as discouragement, doubt, or even direct opposition to your spiritual goals. Staying hopeful is essential when facing these spiritual obstacles. Trust in divine protection plays a key role in this resilience. Believing that a higher power is watching over you can provide immense comfort and strength, helping you navigate through challenges with a sense of assurance. This trust aids in staying grounded and focused, even when circumstances become difficult. It serves as a reminder that you are not alone and that a greater purpose is guiding you. This sense of divine oversight reinforces the idea that the challenges you face are part of a larger plan designed to help you grow and fulfill your spiritual potential. By maintaining this trust and hope, you can continue to progress on your spiritual journey, knowing that each obstacle is an opportunity for growth and deeper understanding. Making decisions to leave harmful situations is a vital step for personal and spiritual growth. Sometimes, the best way to protect your energy and maintain your spiritual progress is to distance yourself from negativity. This might mean ending toxic relationships that drain your energy and hinder your progress. Recognizing when a relationship is detrimental to your well-being and having the courage to let it go can be transformative. It allows you to reclaim your power and focus on relationships that support and uplift you. Changing your environment can also be necessary for fostering a positive and nurturing space. Whether it's moving to a new location, changing jobs, or altering your daily routines, 
Creating an environment that aligns with your values and goals can significantly impact your spiritual journey. A supportive environment encourages growth, peace, and positivity, providing the foundation needed to thrive. Setting firm boundaries with those who do not respect your journey is another crucial aspect. This means clearly communicating your needs and limits to others and being willing to enforce these boundaries if they are crossed. Boundaries protect your energy and ensure that you are surrounded by people who honor and support your path. It might be challenging initially, especially if those around you are not used to you asserting yourself, but it is essential for your well-being. You open yourself up to new opportunities, relationships, and experiences that resonate with your true self and support your spiritual aspirations. This proactive approach not only protects your energy, but also fosters an environment where you can flourish, helping you to maintain your spiritual progress and continue evolving on your path. Divine retribution is a concept that involves a higher power intervening to reward or punish individuals based on their actions. Unlike karma, which is an impersonal law of cause and effect, divine retribution is often seen as a personal judgment by a deity or universal force. This judgment can manifest in various forms, often in the afterlife but sometimes in the present life as well. Many people confuse divine retribution with karma, but they are not the same. Karma operates as an impersonal principle. It's the idea that your actions, whether good or bad, create energy that will affect your future, possibly even in future lives. It's a continuous cycle of cause and effect that applies to everyone without any personal judgment from a deity. Divine retribution, on the other hand, is viewed as a more direct and intentional response from a higher power to the moral quality of an individual's actions. This higher power, often personified as a deity, is believed to consciously decide to reward virtuous deeds and punish wrongdoing. These rewards and punishments are seen as expressions of the deity's will and justice, tailored specifically to the individual's actions. In many religious traditions, divine retribution is a central theme, where moral conduct is closely linked to divine favor or wrath. In contrast, karma does not involve a deity making personal judgments. It operates through a natural, universal process where the energy created by one's actions returns to them in some form. Good actions generate positive energy, leading to beneficial outcomes, while bad actions generate negative energy, resulting in adverse consequences. This cycle of action and reaction is continuous and impartial, affecting individuals across lifetimes in accordance with the principle of cosmic justice. Understanding the distinction between divine retribution and karma is important because it highlights different perspectives on morality and justice. Divine retribution is often associated with religious doctrines that emphasize obedience to divine law and the personal oversight of a higher power. Karma, however, is more aligned with philosophies and spiritual traditions that emphasize self-responsibility and the inherent consequences of one's actions. Both concepts encourage ethical behavior, but they do so through different frameworks of understanding the relationship between actions and their outcomes. Divine retribution, on the other hand, is more specific and personal. It involves a higher power actively deciding to reward or punish someone based on their deeds. This reward or punishment can happen after death or in the current life, depending on the beliefs of different cultures and religions. The concept suggests that a deity is watching over people, ensuring that justice is served in a moral sense. In many religious traditions, Divine retribution is a key component of justice. It reassures believers that there is a moral order in the universe where good deeds are eventually rewarded and bad deeds are punished. This belief can provide comfort and motivation to lead a virtuous life, knowing that a higher power is overseeing everything. Karma is a fundamental concept in many spiritual traditions, particularly in Hinduism, Buddhism, and Jainism. The word karma literally translates to action in Sanskrit. It refers to the principle of cause and effect where every action has corresponding consequences. 
This means that the actions you take, whether good or bad, will eventually return to you in some form. Karma operates on the idea of causation and interdependence. When you perform an action, it sets off a chain of events that will influence your future. Good actions tend to bring positive results, while negative actions lead to unfavorable outcomes. This cycle of action and reaction is ongoing and affects both your current life and future lives. In Hinduism, karma is intricately linked with the concepts of dharma, duty, and moksha, liberation. The law of karma suggests that individuals are responsible for their own fate through their actions. Good karma, resulting from virtuous actions, helps to balance and resolve past bad karma, eventually leading to spiritual liberation from the cycle of birth and rebirth, samsara. Conversely, bad karma can accumulate and create obstacles in one's path to enlightenment and liberation. Buddhism also emphasizes the role of karma in the moral and spiritual development of individuals. The Buddha taught that karma is a natural law, not governed by any deity, and that understanding and altering one's karma through ethical living, mindfulness, and compassion is key to breaking free from the cycle of suffering, dukkha, and achieving nirvana. In this context, karma is not seen as punishment or reward, but as a natural consequence of one's actions, which shapes one's present and future experiences. In Jainism, karma is viewed as a physical substance that adheres to the soul, influencing its journey through countless lives. The ultimate goal is to purify the soul of all karmic particles, achieving a state of absolute purity and liberation, Kevalajnana. This is accomplished through strict adherence to nonviolence, ahimsa, truthfulness, and other ethical principles. Karma's principle of causation and interdependence underscores the interconnectedness of all actions and their repercussions. It encourages individuals to be mindful of their thoughts, words, and deeds, fostering a sense of moral responsibility and ethical conduct. By understanding and embracing the concept of karma, individuals can strive to live in harmony with the universe, contributing to their own spiritual progress and the well-being of others. A common misconception about karma is that it functions as direct retribution. People often think that if they do something bad, something bad will immediately happen to them. However, karma is not about immediate punishment or reward. It operates in a more complex and subtle manner. The effects of your actions might not be immediately apparent and can manifest in ways that are not always directly linked to the original action. Viewing karma as purely retributive is a misunderstanding. Instead, karma pertains to the natural balance of actions and consequences. It encourages people to act with integrity and kindness, understanding that their actions will eventually have repercussions. This perspective fosters a more compassionate and thoughtful approach to life, where individuals strive to create positive outcomes for themselves and others. The concept of karma emphasizes accountability, reminding us that we are responsible for our actions and their consequences. This sense of responsibility can lead to personal growth and development. By reflecting on our past actions and their outcomes, we can learn valuable lessons and make better decisions in the future. This process of self-improvement is essential for spiritual growth. When someone harms the chosen ones, they often face negative consequences in their own lives. This occurs because the chosen ones are usually connected to a higher power or spiritual realm. The harm inflicted on them can have far-reaching effects, impacting not only the chosen ones, but also the person who caused the harm. Due to this connection to a higher power, actions taken against the chosen ones are closely observed and the universe ensures that justice is served. The negative consequences that follow harming the chosen ones can vary. These repercussions might manifest as personal struggles, setbacks, or other inconvenient events. It is not about severe punishment, but rather about experiencing the natural outcomes of one's actions. 
These experiences serve as lessons helping individuals understand the importance of treating others with respect and kindness. Those who choose to harm the chosen ones may find themselves facing negative consequences in their own lives. This is not about vengeance, but rather the natural unfolding of karma, the law of cause and effect. When someone inflicts harm upon the chosen ones, they disrupt the balance of energy inviting repercussions into their own lives. The universe operates on a principle of fairness, ensuring that actions have consequences. When someone intentionally harms another, especially someone who carries a positive energy like the chosen ones, they disrupt this balance. As a result, they may experience what is often referred to as the boomerang effect. The negative energy they put out returns to them. These negative consequences can manifest in various ways depending on the severity of the harm inflicted and the individual's karmic debt. It might be a series of unfortunate events, personal struggles, or a general sense of discontentment. The purpose of these consequences is not punishment, but rather a lesson, an opportunity for growth and reflection. The chosen ones are often connected to a higher power or spiritual realm which offers them protection and support. When someone tries to harm them, they are essentially challenging this higher power. As a result, the universe intervenes to restore balance, ensuring that justice is served in its own way. It's important to note that these consequences are not predetermined or orchestrated by the chosen ones themselves. Instead, they are a natural response to the disruption caused by the harmful actions. The chosen ones may forgive those who have wronged them, but the universe still acts to maintain balance and uphold justice. Forgiveness is a profound tool that holds the power to liberate us from the shackles of negativity and resentment. When we forgive, we release ourselves from the burden of holding on to anger and hurt, allowing us to move forward with grace and peace. At its core, forgiveness is an act of compassion, both for ourselves and for others. By extending forgiveness, we acknowledge the humanity in ourselves and in those who have wronged us. We recognize that everyone makes mistakes and that harboring grudges only perpetuate suffering. Forgiveness does not mean condoning or forgetting the harm that has been done. Instead, it is a conscious decision to let go of the negative emotions that bind us. It frees us from the cycle of revenge and retaliation offering us the opportunity to break free from the chains of bitterness and resentment. It's a gift we give ourselves. When we forgive, we release ourselves from the grip of the past, allowing us to embrace the present moment fully. We reclaim our power and autonomy, refusing to allow past grievances to dictate our future happiness. Forgiveness is not always easy, especially when the wounds run deep. It requires courage, vulnerability, and a willingness to let go of our ego. However, the rewards of forgiveness are immeasurable. It opens the door to healing and reconciliation, fostering greater understanding and empathy. In a world often fraught with chaos and negativity, the act of spreading positivity becomes an invaluable tool for fostering peace and harmony. Engaging in personal reflection allows us to find tranquility amidst the turbulence of life, enabling us to navigate challenges with grace and resilience. Renewing our energies through practices such as meditation and solitude empowers us to stay grounded amidst the distractions and pressures of daily life. These moments of introspection provide us with the clarity and strength needed to remain steadfast in our commitment to personal growth and spiritual development. Spreading love and positivity is not merely a passive endeavor, but an active choice we make each day. By cultivating a mindset of kindness and compassion, we become beacons of light in a world often shrouded in darkness. Our words and actions have the power to uplift and inspire, creating ripple effects that extend far beyond our immediate surroundings. If you're still watching, I'd like to thank you for your attention.
If you enjoyed the content and want to see more, please consider clicking the subscribe button. Your support is very appreciated. Feel free to share your experiences or thoughts in the comments below. Until next time, take care and subscribe for more insightful content.